Let's face it, After Effects is the de facto king of typography animations and it's not going away anytime soon. But Blender is closing the gap and I keep encountering more and more cases when it's a good, if not a better replacement for text work. A couple of days ago, as I was experimenting with geometry nodes, I thought of replicating the path option functionality in After Effects. You know the one, when you draw a path and simply tell a text sentence to align itself along and follow it. How hard could it be anyway? Or so I thought initially. I already envisioned it working in 3D and set myself to work. The truth is, it wasn't that simple. Spreading and orienting instances along paths based on their index number is easy, but in this particular case they represent text, and for text to form a sentence that makes sense, the characters have to maintain a certain distance from each other, and that distance is not always uniform. Follow this video and I'll show you how to do it properly. Start by adding a curve object with a geometry node modifier attached to it. I've already drawn a curve path. Add a string to curve node and type a sentence. Animate a whole sentence sliding along a custom drawn spline. Now don't get fooled by the name. This node returns a bunch of instances instead of curves. Why is this relevant, you might ask? Think of instances as regular objects with geometry and transformations. You can use one set of transformations to position and orient each one at your heart's content and the geometry will follow suit. Append a set position node. To visualize both the curve and the text, join their geometries. We will use a sample curve to read a position along the spline for each character instance. Add a sample curve node after the group input geometry. Feed the position output of this node to the set position input. All the characters jump at the start of the curve. That's because we are sampling the position at the start of the curve with a factor of zero for all of them. We'll use the current position of the character instances to drive the factor input. Connect a position node. What we're interested in is the distance of each character from the center. Insert a vector length node or a distance node. To get a proper sampling factor we need to represent each character distance as a portion of the curve length. Add a curve length node to the input geometry and divide the character distance by it. This will return a 0 to 1 value. Feed the result into the factor input of the sample curve node. This will spread the instances properly. And it will work even if you decide to change the font scale. Let's now orient them to follow the curve. Apart from the position vector, the sample curve node returns us the tangent vector along it and the normal also. Let's use them to calculate the rotation of each instance. Insert a rotate instance node and make sure to leave the local space option active. This node expects an Euler rotation vector expressed in radians. The tangent and normal vectors instead represent directions in space, so we can't just connect them and expect everything to work. We have to convert those directions into Euler rotation vectors. Feed the tangent output into the vector input of an Align Euler to Vector node. This node calculates the Euler rotation needed to align the x-axis of an instance to the tangent direction of the curve, the one flowing along the curve. We're not done though. For the instances to follow the spline correctly, they need to align themselves with the normal direction as well, the one pointing away from the curve. Take the rotation vector and feed it to the rotation input of a second Align Euler to Vector node. Choose Y as the axis to align and feed the normal vector as the direction to align to. The characters are now aligned to the spline, but they are arranged upside down. To fix this, let's invert the normal direction, scaling it by minus 1. Now that we have the characters aligned properly, how do we animate them along the curve? Easy. Just add to their vector length value. As you see, 
changing this value makes them slide. But they stop as soon as they reach the curve's end. To have them loop around, insert a fraction node after the add operation. This will return just the fraction part of a number, making sure that the value never exceeds one. Playing with the add slider, you'll notice that as soon as the characters reach one end of the spline, they jump to the other one and continue sliding. You can automate the animation based on time in seconds. Add a time node. Use a range map node to fit 0 to 10 seconds into an interval from 1 to 0. Hit play and watch proudly the characters slide and orient themselves along the curve. In addition to all of this, they also respect the curve tilting. Finally, let me also mention that depending on the sharpness of the curve, you might want to add a translate instance node at the end of the tree to offset the rotation pivot point so the characters don't cross the line too much. Just remember to keep the local space toggle on. And that's it. I hope I have explained it well enough. Thank you for watching and, as always, if you like the video, please share the knowledge.